I'm going to hell. What is going on, you guys? It's Extreme here, and welcome back to another episode of Road to Max Prestige, a series I do every single day at 8 a.m. Pacific time. So if you do enjoy today's episode, let me know by either subscribing if you're new around here, hitting that like, share, or favorite button. And of course, you could always leave a comment telling me what you liked or didn't like about this episode. And hopefully, hopefully I can do better in the next one. Now, for the record, today I'm going to be talking about my time working for Toys R Us. Now, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because it is technically... And I say this because it really is technically the start of the holiday season. And I know there's going to be a lot of you out there looking for a part-time or seasonal job. I've worked a lot of different places over the years. As I've said before, I've worked for Toys R Us. I worked for Target. I worked for AMC Theaters. I worked security. I worked at Hollywood Video of all places. I worked at SeaWorld. I worked at an amusement park. Damn it, man. I've worked all over. Now, some of those places are not exactly seasonal good. You know, they're not good for seasonal work. And also, if you don't live near an amusement park, that kind of defeats the purpose. So, I'm not going to talk about my time working at a seasonal, or a amusement park, sorry. And I'm damn sure not going to be talking about places that are out of business. So, I guess that leaves Target, Toys R Us, Best Buy. And security, if you really must go there. So that's what I'm going to do today, as you already know from the title. We're going to talk about my time at Toys R Us, and I'm going to give you guys my overall opinion on whether or not it's something you might want to look into as a seasonal job or not. So first off, my time working at Toys R Us was from 2003 to about 2004, almost 2005. Um, when I worked at Toys R Us... I was, I guess you could say, still dealing with stuff. And what I mean by that is, I had suffered for about a year of dealing with a manager that didn't like me for really stupid reasons. And this individual <laughs> tortured me by basically not working. And it affected my initial start with Toys R Us because I was in this mindset of well I don't know if I want to be here I don't know if I want this job I don't know if I want to work at all I'm being honest it didn't take long to get out of that state of mind but within my first three months of being there all kinds of chaos happened uh, during that time was when the massive wildfires the first massive wildfires taking place here in San Diego and I was out of work during that time, but I was employed at Toys R Us. The reason I was out of work is because a coworker of mine who was hired early for the seasonal start had uh, decided he was gonna start stealing from the company. And he implemented me in his theft. How did he implement me? Long and short of it is, he basically made it seem like the only person who would have done it was me. So, yeah. In fact, he even went so far as to claim I was in on it when they talked to him. Son of a bitch. So, I was suspended without pay for two weeks. And unjustly so. And I was pretty pissed about it. And I was... I would say vengeful of the situation for a little while, like I wanted retribution, and I would eventually get it, it just took a really long time. But eventually I was cleared of all allegations, and I was allowed to return to work. Cool! Besides that one hiccup with my employment there, oh and the fact that during that year's Christmas season I hurt my back to the point where after a year, not even a full year, nine months, ten at tops, I eventually lost sensation below my legs. Yeah. 
I've talked about that before. If I haven't, I will do it eventually. More than likely, I've already talked about it, though. So, that, however, was my own dumb fault. Not Toys R Us's fault. I was fully informed to be careful. Obviously, I didn't listen. I probably should have listened, all right? So, I got hurt. And, again, that was on me. It wasn't Toys R Us's fault. However, when I reported it to management, they, uh... They found every excuse possible not to help. Now, I don't blame that on Toys R Us as a company. I blame that on the management staff at that particular Toys R Us. Because, yeah, they were still, I guess you could say, a little butthurt about the fact that I was accused of stealing. And even though it had been proven on numerous occasions that I didn't, and I was the guy that would constantly rat on people. Yeah, oh yeah, I rat on people. You know, I didn't care. Uh, I would also catch thieves, actual thieves that came into the store that didn't work there. I would catch them, you know, detain them. It wasn't part of my job. We didn't have a loss prevention at Toys R Us. Now, I'm pretty sure that they have changed that because I know loss prevention has become an issue for Toys R Us over the last few years, so. There may be a loss prevention team there for the holiday season. I know that more than likely will be the case. But I was that at my store. I was the guy that would rat out everybody. Didn't care who you were. Because I I never liked stealing. You know, this is, again, this is coming from the guy who was cheated on. You know, like, come on. I'm going to rat you out. Just deal with it. You don't like it? Tough shit. You shouldn't do it in the first place. And some of the crap these people were stealing, it wasn't like they were stealing something for their kids. No, 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 no. They were stealing stuff because it was worth something. Yeah. That's a shitty move. So, of course I'm going to wrap those people out. Like, I know of at least two employees that stole a toy because they just didn't have the money and it was for their kid. I'm not mad at that. You know? I'm not going to report that shit because, you know, they had good intentions for what they were doing. They weren't trying to profit from it. They weren't trying to collect it. They were doing it for a kid. Their kid or some other kid. I know one employee that stole a Barbie for her friend's daughter because her friend couldn't afford to buy her kid a toy for Christmas. And the only reason she stole it is because she didn't have the money. She had to pay her rent. She did what she had to do. She was able to buy her kids toys pay her rent but then her friend came to her with this problem and you know I don't fault her for that in fact I'd have done the same thing just saying I would have so you know it, it, Toys R Us is a fun place you will find that a lot of the people that work there are really good people they have good hearts they have good intentions there will be those bad eggs there will be those assholes but ultimately, you're going to deal with a lot of good people when you work there. And that was one of the things I enjoyed about my time at Toys R Us was the constant good people we dealt with. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't all bad. I had bad experiences, but those were, some of them were self-sustained. You know, like I did it to myself in some ways. In other ways, <laughs> no, I just wrong place, wrong time. It is what it is. So now I guess my recommendation, if you're of age and I mean you gotta be at least 18 to 21 years old yeah Toys R Us would be a good part time job for you if you have kids Toys R Us is a great job for you especially this holiday season if you have nieces, nephews or anything like that yeah Toys R Us is a good job for you if you are a kid if you're underage Toys R Us is not a good job for you because unfortunately well, they, uh, they're they pretty picky about what hours they need you available, and most underage individuals will not be able to work the kind of hours they need you to work. And with Christmas time, it's pure chaos, man. So you may get hired. I, I know that when I was working there, they didn't employ any minors for the holiday season. Number three is that they did hire them. But they were all let go or put on leave the week of Christmas because, yeah, for seven days prior to Christmas, if you were underage, you were not in that store 
unless you were there as a customer because it is insanity the week before Christmas. Literally, seven days exactly before Christmas, all hell broke loose. And I'm walking around with a bad back, so trust me when I tell you this. It's a hard job. So ultimately, yeah, it's a good job to get if it's just seasonal. If you're trying to make a career out of it or do something long term, I don't recommend it. There are far better jobs, um, for especially for adults. For kids, teenagers, you know, just trying to make some pocket cash, it's a good job. The benefits don't really help you out too much, but they're there if you want to use them. So there you go. Uh, I guess that's pretty much it. I got really nothing more to say on Toys R Us. I do want to touch on the WWE Survivor Series pay-per-view that took place yesterday and the epic debut. Okay, I'm going to be honest. It was an epic debut, but the actual arrival in arena for the man called Sting, very, very underdone. Uh, I was excited, you know, Survivor Series, the main event was good. The show for me was entertaining as a whole, but ultimately I felt that the debut of Sting was the highlight, if you will. Unfortunately, Sting's music was so bad. <laughs> it was just, that music was god freaking awful. It was, it was bad. All around it was bad. There was nothing good about Sting's debut with the music in time. When you take the, the an entrance out of it, oh, it was epic. It was a wonderful moment, and it really sets up for things going forward into the new year, and of course, into WrestleMania, and to see Sting versus Triple H. Honestly, I wish this had been 10 years ago, because I think that match would have done so much better. But then again, for a guy of his age, Sting moves around pretty damn good, man. So, I guess we'll see what happens. Um, uh, March, but definitely was a good show. Uh, I was honestly, I'm glad the show went off without a hitch. Again, I don't know if I mentioned this yesterday, but the pay per view was held in St. Louis, and that's hap that just happens to be where the grand jury is presiding over the Michael Brown incident from a few months back. So, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot of chaos apparently behind the scenes at last night's show because they were afraid at any single moment the grand jury could come back and say, hey, we made a decision. And all hell would have broken loose. It literally would have been a riotous environment. And that would have been bad. But thankfully, that didn't happen. However, I'm pretty sure that the grand jury is going to wait until after the new year. They're going to draw this in, this out, especially with the holidays. The economy cannot take this hit. And that's exactly what would happen if the grand jury doesn't come back with a vote the public wants. The sad thing is, it's not the public that has to vote on this. It's the jury themselves. I do not want to be in their shoes. I'm glad I'm not. And that's why I say be safe, you guys. You never know what's going on out there. Just... Be, be careful because you never know anyways thank you guys for joining me i hope you guys enjoyed today's episode i will be back tomorrow with another one and hopefully well i know you guys are gonna like tomorrow's episode so stay tuned more to come till next time adios Just, you know i still have respect for anyone that serves this serves my country and uh, any anyone that serves their country, whether it's America, UK, Japan, China, England, UK is England, Eddie. Fuck. You know, anyone who serves for their nation, you have my respect because yeah, I can do it. But <clears throat> if I had to, I would. But I'm not gonna do it voluntarily. I'm just saying. But uh, you know, I I love certain people in my dad's side of the family and they the rest of them can all kick rocks as far as I